Hey, what's up guys? Zebra here, and before we dive into today's video, I just want to take a moment to address the fact that it's been forever since I've posted anything. So, without going into the long, drawn-out story of my life, let's just say that since I posted that last video with the uh, Aerojet facility, things have just been really busy, and I haven't had a whole lot of time to get out and explore or do much. So, I apologize for that. And originally, I hadn't planned on posting any more videos. I was just going to sort of let my existing content sit, uh, you know, for people to find and enjoy. But I wasn't planning on producing anything new. But there were a couple things that happened that changed my mind about that. And the first thing, first and foremost, is you guys. Now what I mean by that is, in the time that my channel was sitting inactive, I was getting new subscribers, new comments, things like that, almost every day. Now for a tiny little channel like mine, that was really cool. And, um, you know, it made me feel like you guys were enjoying the type of content that I make. And so that kind of pushed me back into uh, getting out and exploring again. So thank you guys for that. And the second thing, as you can see, is I got a new set of wheels. Uh, I recently purchased this pickup truck, and I've been working hard to convert it into my camping and exploring setup. So this will be our first time taking it out on a real adventure. So hopefully it performs as well as I'm hoping that it does. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, thank you to everyone who commented on the Aerojet video. Uh, I got tons of comments from people who have visited the site, who have been out there, even some people who have worked out there. And it was just really fascinating to read everything that you guys had to say and all of your insight and knowledge. So thanks again for everyone who contributed to that, even if I don't get a chance to go through and like every single comment. Just know that I really enjoyed reading them. And um, I think we can safely say that that mystery is solved. Now anyway, enough talking. Let's get to today's video, because I think you guys are really going to enjoy the destination I've picked out. I was also fortunate on this trip to be able to have my friend Anna come along with me. It just so happened that our days off lined up, and she was just as anxious as I was to get out of the city for a little while and do some exploring. The whole world has to know we stopped at Arby's. <laughs> After a quick lunch at Arby's, we were on the road to our destination, Dixie Valley. Now, I'd prepared this whole long script about the history and the significance of the valley, but let's face it, you guys don't tune into my channel to listen to me talk about history for 10 minutes. So I'll just give you the long story short right here. So Dixie Valley was originally settled in the 1860s as a small mining camp. Although, like most of Nevada's boom towns, interest dried up, and within about seven years it was uninhabited again. Dixie Valley would be rediscovered in the early 1900s by ranchers. Now, Dixie Valley is the lowest lying valley in west central Nevada, which means that it has these springs and groundwater which just flow, flow freely throughout the valley. Now, this was a godsend for the ranchers looking for a water source for their thirsty livestock and crops. Over the 1900s, about 50 ranches sprung up in Dixie Valley, most of them being over a mile away from their closest neighbor. Ranching would continue until about the 70s or 80s when Dixie Valley again became uninhabited. In the mid-1990s, the U.S. Navy purchased Dixie Valley as part of its range training complex for the Naval Air Station in Fallon, Nevada, about 60 miles away. Now, as part of this transition, the U.S. Navy got to work demolishing a lot of the ranches out there and dotting the landscape with all these demilitarized armored vehicles, which were to be used for, by the pilots as part of their target acquisition process. Now, to this day, most of Dixie Valley is open to the public. There's no live ammunition that's used out there. So we're able to go out there and explore and check out everything that's out there. So without further ado, let's go see what we found. And real quick guys, let me point out, I do apologize for the smudgy video quality on some of this video. So unfortunately my Olympus action camera had some scratches on the lens housing and I didn't realize just how bad they were until I was replaying the footage. So please just bear with me for now, and hopefully soon I'll be able to upgrade, uh, you know, get a new lens cover or get some better camera equipment. After turning off the freeway, we continued our trek down the dirt road, knowing that Dixie Valley wouldn't be too much farther. Then, off to our right, a fenced facility of some sort came into view. Of course we had to go investigate. There's a ditch on this side, so this makes this way farther than it has to be. <laughs> it on purpose didn't you know I wouldn't be surprised
This spot seemed to be some sort of military scrapyard or storage yard, and it contained a variety of old military vehicles. As we were checking everything out, one vehicle in particular caught our eye. You notice anything unusual about it? The tank is literally made out of plywood. Oh my god, it's made out of <laughs> Yep, that tank was built out of plywood. Now, as amusing as this initially was to us, we figured this was most likely intended to be a training prop for the pilots to use during their aerial exercises. Continuing just a little further, we saw what looked like a large radar or communications installation. So we should probably turn around here is what you're saying, right? Probably. Inside we could see a truck and at least one person walking around inside the fence line doing some sort of work. Uh, just a reminder of the fact that this desolate patch of landscape is still a very active military installation. Now having seen all there was to see here, and not wanting to draw too much unwanted attention to ourselves, we continued on toward our final destination. Yeah, according to this, we passed it. I passed it. Yeah, I didn't see any roads, did you? I think there was a little one going that way. Okay, we'll go with that. Eventually, we found a rough-looking dirt road that my GPS said would get us yeah. out to where we wanted to be. That's come. But it would not be without its own yeah. share of difficulties. So there are literally only two things to see on this road. There's moon dust, and there's giant ditches. That's it. This is our sightseeing expedition. I hope you enjoy. Moon dust. As it turns out, the ruts and the deep powdery sand were about to be the least of our worries. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. It's a little dense, yeah. Does it end? <laughs> is this just our life now? Oh shit. You have a lot of scratches by the time we're done with that. Um. Questions will have been going back the way. Oh, God. Nice. I think we're almost done. Yes, we're out. We made it. We lived. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That was ridiculous. No, I was going to have to go back tomorrow, right? No, we'll take the other road out. Oh, there's another road out? Right, I'm go fix my mirror. Could it be? Could that be a gravel road? <laughs> if you can get onto it. No. No problem. Let's see which way do we want to go. Ah, oh, yeah. No worries. Finally, we were clear of the trees and a well-maintained gravel road first. came into view. Now, rumor has it there are still a tiny handful of residents who call Dixie Valley home. Now, it wasn't long before we found a ranch that had some signs of habitation. But given the gates and signs all around the ranch, we decided to drive on without investigating much further. Well, rumor has it there are a few people that still live out here. There would be plenty more sights to see here. And it wouldn't be long until we discovered our first attraction of the trip. Behind some tall bushes, a green military tank came into view.
More specifically, this is an M247 Sergeant York self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. We didn't realize it at the time, but later on, one of my fellow military veteran friends reached out hey, to me to it. let me know what a unique find this was. So between 1977 and 1985, only 50 or so of these anti-aircraft guns were ever produced. Kind of the, Today, approximately the five of them sit in museums or on display. All of the rest are largely believed to have been demolished or destroyed as bombing range targets. So seeing one of these up close and mostly intact was a really unique experience. And as you'll see, it's not going to be the last. Hmm. Go all the way around. Oh, they welded it shut. This looks safe to walk on. Looks safe. I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't know how to swim, so I cannot rescue you if you do anything stupid. Yeah, I don't think I'll drown in the six inches of water out there. I think that's more than six inches. Because it's going to be soggy underneath. It's at least. Two yeah. feet. I mean, I might sink in the quicksand, but I'm not going to drown. See, totally safe. We barely made it half a mile down the road when we spotted our next find, an adobe style building off to our left, flanked by some military style shade structures. Dominus. Now to give you an idea of the abundance of water out here in Dixie Valley, these shade bunkers were literally sitting in the middle of a big pond of standing water, despite the nearly triple digit temperatures outside and the scorched and barren landscape all around us. No, this is honestly not as exciting as I was expecting. Yeah. Let's go and search pack socks. Oh good, they got the menu posted. Oh. It's good to know. Doesn't look ominous at all. No worse than that giant eye staring at us. I wonder if Vincent and Misty are still together. Well, it says forever, so I would assume so. Apparently Seth is single. You know, for as hideously dilapidated as this building is, that roof actually looks pretty nice. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't want to get shocked. No. Yeah. What? Dog. Oh my gosh. There, make the artist famous. Package. What's it for? Oh, didn't know Amazon delivered out here. I know. Oh, for Paul Sel Selcido. Hmm. 
little fixer upper. Just needs some cosmetic work, it'll be fine. Who needs engines? Still has some of its pedals. Two. That's all you need. I think it was supposed to have three. Uh-huh. Oh, the accelerator's just jammed down. A little further down the road, we found our next convoy of vehicles. This time a pair of M113 armored personnel carriers flanking an AM General Deuce and a Half truck. Looks oh. comfortable, huh? Yeah. You go try to drive it. There's no controls anymore. Sure oh, there yeah, is. There are. There's two up there. I'm not sure I can get in there to drive it though. Hey, you can. You just have to go up and over. Oh, you go up and over? Mm-hmm. Something tells me it's not gonna move. Well, go try. Oh, here's the wire, here's the power cord. <laughs> it's not plugged in. Huh. Well, nearly. Fine, I'll drive it. <laughs> so, this is the view from the driver's seat. This is. Not quite as spacious as my truck, but uh, it's got to be the gear shift. Pull to stop engine. Throttle. Huh. All seems basic enough. I think we can drive this out of here. That one, can you drive that one? There's no seat, but I can probably get in. It's alright. Don't need a seat to drive it. Oh, it's still pedal. It'll totally be fine. Drive. So there are. Probably. This hits something. Might have trouble shifting it. Yeah. Wonder if that. Does the gas work? The clutch still gives you resistance. Huh. Brakes don't feel too good. Oh yeah, this is much nicer. Oh, I don't know, kind of a low ceiling though. That's fine. And a little bit lower seat. Oh. That must be the toaster oven where you put your hot pockets. So it says here you're supposed to secure the engine panel before starting the engine, but I won't even see an engine panel. So it's probably not that important then. Oh yeah, I can totally fix that, could you? It's just like the one in my car. Like now. 
Oh yeah, I could totally fix that, could you? We also found a desert dweller who appears to have seen better days. The chicken wire man. Checking his pockets. Yeah, never know. <laughs> never know, might have some loot in there. The next spot we explored would give us a little bit different historical perspective. That looks dangerous. It just looks like farm things. Farm things. drive it from, I guess. Here we have some abandoned farm equipment along with a tiny hut constructed out of mud and sticks. Welcome to Dixie Valley Rental Finders. Here we have a beautiful one studio apartment going for $1,400 a month. No utilities included. As you can see, it's uh, carefully constructed with straw and mud. Despite the primitive building materials, it was clear that a great deal of care and skill went into constructing this building. No way. I think so, because this one has like... Are you, are you sure? I'm not sure. I thought it was. Looks no, like I think it's just... Metal wire. Who builds a hut out of straw and mud and then wires it for electricity? I don't know. I'd do that. But why to live in it? You know what this mud hut needs? Faster Wi-Fi. something. Hmm. Actually finished it off pretty nicely. Right there. There's another car that didn't make it. Ew. I think they had it a little worse though. <laughs> Looks like a yeah. Utilities or a utilities box there with a bunch of wiring that had electricity. Hmm, nice little fire pit. Not far down the road, it's another overgrown clearing caught our attention, and we decided oh. to go and have a look. It's a rim of a toilet. That's nice. Oh, stupid bee is back. It is. Okay. Guys, I don't know if you can see it on the camera right now, but there's a fox right there. There's a bee in my hair. That sounds like a problem. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you, pretty fox. I want to go find where this fox ran off to. Now, as we were walking back to the truck, I saw something that really surprised me. There was a fox standing in the clearing right next to my truck. Now, I've never seen a fox out here in this part of the desert, so it really caught me by surprise. And of course, looking back, it's possible that this could have just been a young coyote, but I've seen tons and tons of coyotes out here, and this really looked like a fox. It didn't look like a coyote to me. So uh, I got my camera out, but unfortunately, before I could get any uh, decent video, he uh, ran off into the bushes, and I was only able to get one more little fleeting glance of him. There's the fox. <laughs> or is that a... I can't tell if that's a fox or a coyote. Continuing on down the road, we spotted another Sergeant York off to our right. Now this one was situated right in the middle of what appeared to be an old cattle ranch, complete with a loading pen and another one of those mud huts. Those little windows. This window's got a nice little wood frame in it. This one probably
While exploring this vehicle, we were surprised to see that the top hatch was wide open. <laughs> it was going to be a tight squeeze getting inside due to the angle of the gun, but I wasn't about to leave without getting a look inside this thing. Ultimately, I was able to lower myself down inside without too much difficulty and get some video. Lot of room. Here we go. We made it. Here we are in the turret. You see, here's the gunner's seats. Get up here, get you a good view. There. So here we are sitting in the gunner's seat. Periscope glass. This one does looks like looks like it's welded. But there you go. We made it inside. How are you going to get out? I haven't got to that part yet. I'll figure that out. I haven't even got down to the driver's compartment yet. Oh, Jesus Alright, now the fun part. Which, I honestly... Oof. That is nasty down there. So, I'll just show you with the camera. There you go. And here we are. Looking up in the turret. Hello! See? <laughs> Nothing to it. You sure you don't want to go in there? Having satisfied our curiosity, we decided to keep going, making our way down to the southern end of the valley. Right up here, somewhere, is the road we came in on. Oh yeah. The road to hell. Here we are, barren wasteland of Nevada. It's beautiful. I love it. This is perfection. It wasn't long until we spotted our next military vehicle. In contrast to the other vehicles that we'd seen so far, this one was actually a legitimate main battle tank. Now, if I recall correctly from my days in the military, this was an M60 Patton battle tank, but maybe there's someone out there who has some more expertise or uh, can give me a little more specific insight on exactly what kind of tank we're looking at here. So if so, please let me know down in the comments below. You can literally see the ground through there. <laughs> I don't see much anymore. Glass has seen better days. You think? Yeah, this is all welded. Figured out what's wrong with it. It doesn't have an engine. Dang it. Hey! I found the tank phone! I found the tank phone! <laughs> and while we were checking out this tank, we spotted a white vehicle off in the distance, and at first we thought maybe we were being watched by someone. So I got the binoculars out, 
and eventually we figured out it was just an abandoned vehicle sitting in the desert. It wasn't quite a military tank, but as long as we were out there, we decided we'd go and check it out anyhow. why you choose your off-road vehicles wisely. Just down the road from here, we discovered a spot with some massive trees and figured we'd probably find at least an old ranch or something down here. And we were right. In addition to the rubble from an old building, we found our third, yes our third, Sergeant York sitting here under a big tree. Now just like the last one, this one had its turret hatch open. And this time there was a lot more room to climb down inside. I was able to convince Anna that it was her turn to go down first this time. There's an old bag of donuts in here. Ooh, I was getting kind of hungry. Focus. Oh wait, I can adjust the focus. Oh, I can adjust the focus. Can you actually see through that? I can just move one of the lenses a little bit. What? I can actually see through it. Those do. I think they're stuck. Can I adjust the focus a little bit? Of switches. Now, I was really amazed at just how much equipment had been left inside, and we had a really great time poking around and checking everything out inside the vehicle. Kind of cozy in here. It is. It's kind of hot in here. Yeah, it is. Just a short distance away was an old abandoned bus. Now we checked it out, and this bus looked like it had been retrofitted for camping or living at some point in its history. As you can see, it's got like a little kitchenette and a sleeping area. But obviously, it's seen better days. Still got part of an engine. I think I'll start. You think so? Yeah. 20 Mike. No. I don't think this was the original door. Probably don't. It's got a padlock on the bottom, it's not very useful. Hey, whatever works. Obviously it doesn't. Nearby, a concrete trough collected water freely from one of the valley's many underground wells. Oh, this is just weird. What you got? <laughs> got me. And because of the large shade trees and the relatively flat ground here, we decided this would probably be a good place to set up our camp for the night although we still had plenty of daylight left and wanted to drive a little bit more first. We continued to explore the nearby areas, but unfortunately by now we'd already seen most of uh, the nearby points of interest, and the only other military vehicles we could find were far out behind barbed wire fences. Oh, oh, 
That white one was giving us a stink eye. Look at that gray one laying down, it's massive. Which one? That one laying down in the kind of the middle. Oh my god. It's like a pig cow. <laughs> Eventually, we were getting down to about half a tank of gas and decided it was about time to head back and set up camp. But not before visiting one more pond just down the road. I have high hopes for the place. Wow, this might be the most exceptionally boring pond we've visited so far. I think it's in there. Should I be concerned about the tire tracks making a pentagram? What? They totally do. <laughs> Guys, we're going to be camping like 200 yards away from the pentagram tire tracks. I'm pretty excited. Heard these things are good. You want to try one? You try it first. Yeah, I'm not hungry. What do you know? There is a pond here. Look at the little fishies. Okay, I stand corrected. This is actually a really pretty pond. All right. Just do my hourly progress check. Hourly? You really think it's gonna take me that long to set up a tent? You did bring the instructions. So are we gonna fill this up and go swimming tonight or what? If you wanna go fill it up, then sure. Mm. I'm gonna be staying at my tent. Sounds like a lot of work. Also, I can't swim. <laughs> what? Do you see what I see? I don't think so. That legit looked like a little ghost on the fence. <laughs> I thought somebody like tied a little stuffed ghost to the fence. Look, it's even got two eyes. It wasn't long after we started setting up camp before some friendly local inhabitants decided to come and visit us. Now we had a really peaceful night out here. Despite this being an active military operations area, we couldn't locate one single light visible from any direction, and the moon and the stars were shining brightly. We stayed up late into the night just watching the shooting stars, along with the occasional satellite and airplane. Out in the distance we could hear the howl of coyotes and the gentle trickle of the well water. Although we wanted to stay longer, it was time to pack up and leave once the sun was up. We said goodbye to our lizard friends and there hit the road goes. back to civilization. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Please leave your ideas and thoughts down in the comment section. If you visited Dixie Valley, uh, please comment. I'd love to hear your experiences out there. And uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon. Until next time, Zebra out.